Hey, hey, what's up, my friend? So in today's video, I want to share with you 10 trading lessons from Richard Dennis. For those of you who do not know who Richard Dennis is, right, he is pretty much a trader in the 1980s, right? He is the founder of the Turtle Traders. He is a market wizard, and according to sources, right, he actually took a $400 trading account and transformed it into $200 million over a 10-year period. So this guy is pretty much a legend, and I want to share with you 10 trading lessons that you can learn from him. Number one, it's misleading, right, to focus on the short-term results. And the reason being is that in trading, right, when you're dealing with probabilities or statistics, right, in the short run, your results are random. And it's only in the long run, right, will it be aligned to its expected value or its true expectancy. Let's say, for example, right, this over here is a, is a systematic trend-following strategy. You can see that from the looks of it, right, it doesn't look profitable at all, at all, right? Because you know, you can see that in 2018, January it's up 6.8%, February it's down, March is down, April down, May it's down. And to a trader who doesn't know what he's getting involved with, he will claim that the strategy doesn't work. Okay, and probably you know, hop on and try something else. But if you look at the big picture, how this strategy has fared, you'll see that this is pretty much likely to be just be a drawdown within the big picture. You can see that overall this strategy, it has losing years, right? Like for example, in uh 2005, 2009, right, 2012, right, but generally, right, year on year, it's profitable. So this is why, you know, you don't want to pay attention too much on the short term results, because it's, as you can see, in the short term, right, the results can look very bleak, it can look bad, for example, you look at over here, right, bad results, bad results, right, this is pretty, uh, okay, this is pretty, uh, not very bad, but it's still, you know, losing for three months in a row, this one losing uh, four months in a row, and uh, you can see that uh, this one over here, pretty bad as well. And these are pretty bad as well. So you can see that all these are all pretty much short-term results. But if you trade long-term, if you have an edge in the markets, right, you have to trust that your system, right, will, you know, uh, turn the tide over. So this is why, you know, Richard Dennis says, right, you know, it's, it's misleading to focus on the short-term results, okay? Number two, you should expect the unexpected in this business, right? Expect the extreme, don't think in terms of boundaries, or limit to what the market might do. So this is actually a very good lesson, right? I think back sometime in uh, 20, 2017, right? Let's talk about Bitcoin. So if you look at Bitcoin over here, you can see that it's about $5,000. And you look at this chart, right? If you, you, let's not talk about, you know, what happened, right? If you look at this chart at this point in time, right now, you'll say that, man, Bitcoin is so high, right? You know, it's not safe to, to be buying right now. Look at the price, how extreme it is, okay? And if you, have this type of boundary or cap to how much you think the price can go, then what happens is that, you know, you would tend to take profits, you exit your trade too early and you end up missing, you know, the move like this where, you know, it was at 5,000, it did a retracement and then boom, all the way up to a high of $20,000. So this is why, you know, as a trend follower, you don't want to limit yourself to how much the market can go. You don't want to say, you know, oh man, it's too high, let me take my profits, let me book my profits because you just have no idea how high or how far the market can go. So this is why, you know, you just, you know, trail your stops, right? And take what the market decides to reward you, okay? So this is a hallmark of a trend follower. Number three, you have to minimize your losses and try to preserve your capital for those few instances where you can make a lot of money in a short period of time. What you can't afford to do is throw away your capital on suboptimal trades. So again, right, this really is a, uh, relevant to trend follower because, you know, you will not be catching trends all the time. There are times where, you know, months that, you know, you catch a good trend and there are months where it's dry, you're just bleeding, you know, uh, getting your stop loss hit, you know, one after another. So this is why, right, you, you have to really, you know, minimize your losses when, you know, the trend has reversed, cut the loss, right, hit your trailing stop, cut the loss. And when the market moves in your favor, you have to, you know, maximize the profits, right? You have to trail your stop loss, right? And, you know, be willing to take what the market is offering and not, you know, just limit your gains, right? Because that is not enough, right? To kind of, you know, recoup those little losses that you have suffered during the dry period of time, okay? So you have to minimize your losses and try to preserve capital for those very few instances where you can make a lot in a short period of time, okay? You have to play good defense and when the good times is here, that's where you can actually, you know, thrive in the better time period. Number four, whatever method you use to enter your trades, right? The most critical thing, the most critical thing is that if there is a major trend, your approach should ensure that you get into the trend. So one thing that you will realize is that trend followers, a lot of them, right? They like to trade breakouts because if you think about this, right? Breakouts is actually one of the few entry techniques that would almost assure you get into a trend. Let's say, for example, right? What is a breakout? 
So the price, you know, breaks above the highs, you go long over here. If you talk about pullback, sometimes the trend just trends very strongly like this. There is almost no pullback. And if you're always waiting for a pullback, right, then it can be difficult to hop on board the trend. And in fact, you might be on the sidelines when the trend is, you know, trending well because you are waiting for a pullback. So this is why, right, for a trend follower, systematic trend follower, a lot of them trade breakouts. Some of them even trade moving average crossover, right, the short-term cross, the long-term moving average, right? And that is one of the surest way that you can assure that you will get on board the trend. I'm not saying that pullback doesn't work, but when you are applying systematic trend following, okay, sometimes pullback, right, might not get you on board the trend. And it can be very painful if you miss the trend because, you know, you're waiting for price to come to your level. Fifth lesson, right, I could trade without knowing the name of the market. And this is possible because Richard Dennis, right, if you think about this, right, trend follower, they are not trading a particular commodity like, you know, oil, gold, silver, etc. They're just simply trading the price on a chart. They are looking to buy at this price level and hopefully they can sell it at a higher level. You're just trading the raw price itself. And to be honest, when I trade, right, sometimes I don't even know what is the, most of the time, I do not know what's the fundamentals of the market, all right? Is it bullish? Is it bearish? You know, and stuff like that. I just trade what I see. If the price is heading higher, I buy. If the price is heading lower, I go short, okay? And that's pretty much what a trend follower do. We just follow price and we are not concerned with, you know, what's the name of the market, what's the fundamentals behind it, what's the macroeconomics behind it, and etc. and yada, yada. Number six, when you have a position, right, you put it on for a reason and you've got to keep it until the reason no longer exists. So for example, you put on a position and you want to ride a trend. You have to be in that trade, riding the trend till the trend is showing signs of reversal. So until it hits your trailing stop loss. So you have to define, right, at what point, right, the reason no longer exists. So basically, at what point, right, would, if the price hit the level, right, it's telling you that the trend, right, is probably coming to an end. So this is where, you know, trend followers, they use trailing stop loss. You can use a moving average to trail your stop loss. You can use the average true range indicator to trail your stop loss, right, and have a set parameter for it and just follow it, right. So uh, for longer term trend followers, they typically use, you know, six times the average true range to trail their stop loss. For medium term trend followers, they can use you know four times the average true range to trail their stop loss. So until their stop loss is hit, right, they will be in the trade holding on to the trade until their stop loss is hit. Right? Because if their stop loss is hit, right, then there's a good chance, right, that you know, hey, the trend might be coming to an end, right, and they don't want to stay in the trade any longer. Okay. Number seven, trading has taught me not to take conventional wisdom for granted, right? What money I made in trading is a testimony to the fact that the majority is wrong a lot of the time. So this one is can really brings down to the point where we talk about bubbles, mania. So again, back to Bitcoin in 2017, right? When the price was at, I think, around 14, 15,000, right? I have people at the gym telling me, you know, talking about Bitcoin, all right? And I have people on Facebook, I'm not sure what scheme they're on, where I think you refer a friend, right? You earn like 50 or $60 for referring a friend to some Bitcoin uh, scheme or program. I don't know what it is. At this point in time, it's a, it's a signal to me that, you know, man, the retail are all, you know, piling in, right? Because I consider myself a professional trader. I'm pretty much in tune, right, to what the price is doing on a day-to-day -day basis. If someone who is outside of, you know, trading, who doesn't even get involved in trading, suddenly got involved in it, right? Because it seems like to be a, a attractive scheme, right? It's an easy way to make money. This to me, right, is I know that, you know, it's towards near the end of the move, right? I'm not trying to, you know, predict how high the market will go, but all the more, right, I want to be alert, right, when the market reverse, I want to bail out of the trade. I don't want to, you know, take it for granted because if everybody is all in the market, the retails are in, the professionals are in, then who is left to buy the stock or the, the, the product or the instrument? Okay, so this is a, a warning sign, right? Whenever you see mom and pop talking about a particular instrument, like, a, you know, Bitcoin, the Dutch tulip mania, the, uh, I don't know, whatever, right? You want to be aware that, hey, you know, the top, or the bottom is about there already, okay? Another example I can share is uh, crude oil. I think in 2014, it had a very strong collapse. It's just declining week after week. And again, right, this uh, this person in the gym came up to me and said, hey, Rainer, you know, I think crude oil has been dropping, you know, so much, right? Do you think, you know, uh, I can, you know, short some crude oil? At that point in time, crude oil was about $60. So I'm thinking, you know, I mean, he, the person, right, let's call him John, he doesn't even trade, right? So if you're going to short crude oil, you have to open up, open a brokerage account, you know, understand what's the meaning of short and find a product to short the crude oil. And to me, I just tell him, say, you know, you know, you know what, forget it, right? I think by the time you enter, it's probably too late. And, and well, crude oil did decline, right, from 60 down to about, you know, I think maybe 40 or $30. There is some meat left in the move, but the reversal is equally swift back towards the upside. So again, right, it's uh, another kind of, you know, red flag, right, when someone who doesn't trade, come to you and talk about trading and talk about a particular instrument, that is a strong red flag that a bottom 
or a top is there about it's about about time for it to occur okay so that's a, a so-called signal that you can use right to take advantage of you know the majority given that they are usually wrong number eight trade small because that's when you're going to be as bad as you know you're going to be learn from your mistakes so this is something that i always advise new traders right you know let's say for example you have a hundred thousand dollars maybe you have some inheritance and and you want to trade i don't recommend putting the full hundred thousand dollars into a trading account even though you have that money because when you start off right you're going to be as bad you're going to suck as bad as possible okay it's, it's like riding a bicycle when you first ride it right you're going to fall you're going to trip right when you first do a let's say heart surgery you don't go and open a heart surgery you know right from the get-go you'll take you know steps along the way and finally you know you open up the heart and you know do whatever you need to do and it's the same for trading you don't straight fund a hundred thousand dollars trading account and trade that from the start Okay, because you will make mistakes, you will, you know, have lessons that the market will want to teach you. And think about this. If it's like tuition fees, right? I'm sure you want to pay as little as possible. So why fund a large account and pay expensive tuition fees? Why not fund a small account? You can learn the same lesson at a fraction of the cost. Okay, so you know, you have money, I've I've no re no I've I've uh, uh no doubt that you, you might have money, but you know, you don't want to put in all your money at one go right take it slow step by step and when you're ready when you're confident you can always scale up again at the same time the best part is if you do make mistakes right the mistakes cost you very little and it's the same lesson whether it's a it's a hundred thousand dollars trading account or a thousand dollars trading account number nine in the real world it is not wise to have your stop loss right where everyone else has their stop so this really brings down or boils down to the fact that you know what i talk about you know don't set your stop loss at obvious level like support resistance. So let me just, you know, share with you what I mean. So for those of you who have been following me, you know, whenever I trade, you know, range support resistance, right? I say that, you know, let's say, for example, you want to go long near the lows of support, right? And market rally. You don't want to just put your stop loss, right? Just below this absolute low because the market could very easily swing down lower, hit your stops and then rally back up higher. Okay, so instead, what you want to do is, you know, give your stop loss, you know, some buffer, a distance away from, you know, obvious market structure. So, for example, if the if this is the low, right, you want to set it, you know, a, a distance, a buffer away. Okay, so if the market really, you know, comes to this area and hit your stop loss, chances are, you know, that support is broken. That's why, you know, you can, you know, break and go down below it by so much. Okay, so this is something that, you know, to me, it's one of the most important thing that a discretionary trader, a price action trader should pay attention to. Do not just blindly put your stops above the highs or lows because those are very prime levels to get stop hunted. Okay, so that's the, the ninth lesson. And finally, right, you can publish trading rules in newspapers and nobody will follow them. The key is consistency and discipline. And I can vouch for this, right? I have read many trading books, studied research papers. They're all available for free in the public. I mean, well, the books are not technically, technically free if to borrow them or buy them from Amazon, but technically it's available on a public domain. The exact trading rules in trading books, they are there. But I've hardly see any traders just, you know, following the rules, right? Reason being is because number one, they don't have the discipline. Number two, they don't have the conviction to trade it. So this is why, you know, you can share rules out there, right? And most retail traders, they will just look at it try it for a while, they encounter a drawdown, a drawdown that I shared with you earlier, right? They focus on a short-term results and after which they abandon the strategy and try something else because they just don't have the conviction, right? They don't have the discipline to follow the rules. So this is really key in trading, right? Because you can have, you know, the best trading strategy out there, okay? But if you can't follow it religiously, you don't have conviction to trade it, you don't understand why it works, right? You will never, right, be a consistently profitable trader. So consistency and discipline is really key. Right? Not just your strategy, not just your risk management, it's the execution. Okay? So with that said, right, uh, let's do a super quick recap, right? I can't do it on this PowerPoint slide, but so it's over here, right? So these are the 10 lessons, right, that I've learned from Richard Dennis and hopefully, you know, sharing some of my insights, right? You kind of understand, you know, what, you know, it means and how you can apply it to your own trading. Okay, so with that said, I have come towards the end of this uh, video. If you want to learn more about, you know, what I do, you can go down to my website, uh, tradingwithrainer.com. I'll just go to the link here and share it with you, right? The tradingwithrainer.com. Okay, tradingwithrainer.com. Okay, the link is uh, on top over here. Okay, so just go down to my website and today we talk about trend following. So really, if you're interested about trend following, you want to learn more about this trading approach, this strategy, go and download this guide over here, the ultimate trend following guide. Click, click this blue button and I'll send it to your inbox for free. Okay, so with that said, 
I've come towards the end of this video. You know, if you've enjoyed it, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to my YouTube channel and any feedback or comment, let me know below and I'll do my best to help. So with that said, I wish you good luck and good trading. I'll talk to you soon.